In this video, I'll teach you everything that you need to know about the arachidonic acid pathway as it pertains to USMLE and COMLEX. As a brief overview, arachidonic acid is a precursor of bioactive lipid metabolites, which are known as eicosanoids. eicosanoids. And these include things like prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and epoxy eicosatrinoic acid. These eicosanoids are pro-inflammatory, which means when the body is in a state of inflammation or when the body needs inflammation, these substances trigger oxidative stress and stimulate the body's natural immune response. Therefore, because eicosanoids are considered pro-inflammatory, you can intervene in the arachidonic acid pathway to treat or manage inflammation. So let's go through the pathway. The first thing that happens is from the membrane, phospholipase A2 promotes the release of arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid can take one of essentially two pathways. One, it can either, as shown in green, be reincorporated back into the phospholipid membrane, and so it's essentially recycled. Or two, as shown in the blue pathway, it can be enzymatically changed into various different downstream active metabolites. And that blue part is what this video is going to focus on today. For the purposes of USMLE and COMLEX, you essentially want to understand that arachidonic acid can be enzymatically changed into downstream bioactive metabolites through one of two pathways. The pathway shown on the left is the lipooxygenase pathway, or LOX. The pathway shown on the right is the cyclooxygenase pathway, or COX. So arachidonic acid can either be recycled or it can go through LOX or COX. Now, let's just kind of sketch out the pathway and we'll point out important things as we go. On the left-hand side, in the lipoxygenase pathway, the enzyme is 5-lipoxygenase and that will convert arachidonic acid into something known as 5-HPETE. So in the LOX pathway, arachidonic acid is converted by 5-lipoxygenase into 5-HPET. On the right-hand side, in the COX pathway, the enzymes COX-1 and COX-2 will convert arachidonic acid first into PGG-2, and then into PGH2. Now both PGG2 and PGH2 are considered cyclic endoperoxides. That's not really important to know for your exam, but I'm pointing that out for completeness sake because it's from these cyclic endoperoxides that other bioactive downstream products are derived. But you have to convert arachidonic acid into these substances first. So at this point in time, let's focus on the COX pathway on the right-hand side. Once we've generated PGH2, PGH2 can be converted into any of the following, prostacyclins, prostaglandins, or thromboxanes. And again, as the overview of my video pointed out, these are generally pro-inflammatory substances. So you're going to have one or multiple of these produced in states of inflammation. For PGH2 to be converted into prostacyclins, as shown in blue, you would use the enzyme prostacyclin synthase. And in this case, you would derive the product PGI2. For PGH2 to be converted into prostaglandins, you would use the enzyme prostaglandin synthase. And the various prostaglandins that could be produced would be PGE1, PGE2, or PGF2. And for PGH2 to be converted into thromboxanes, you would use thromboxane synthase. And the various potential products there include thromboxane A2 or TXA2 and thromboxane B2 or TXB2. Now I've color coded this for your studying pleasure, but just be aware that you first convert your arachidonic acid through COX-1 and COX-2 into your cyclic endoperoxides, and then your cyclic endoperoxides can be changed into prostacyclin, prostaglandin, or thromboxane. Now let's focus on the left-hand part of this slide. Going from arachidonic acid to 5-HPETE, as we touched on already, 
The enzyme that does that is 5-lipoxygenase. And then 5-HPETE can be converted through the same enzyme into leukotriene A4 or LTA4. Just like we saw on the right-hand part of the COX pathway, where you first need to form cyclic endoperoxides in order to get downstream prostacyclins, prostaglandins, and thromboxanes, in the LOX pathway, when you're trying to make leukotrienes, you first need to make leukotriene A4. And then from leukotriene A4, you can either convert to your leukotriene C4, D4, or E4, which are shown in brown using the enzyme LTC4 synthase, or you can convert leukotriene A4 as shown in purple to leukotriene B4 using the enzyme LTA4 hydrolase. So the important thing to keep in mind for the purposes of exams is that in the LOX pathway, all of the leukotrienes are derived from leukotriene A4. And in the COX pathway, all of your prostacyclins, prostaglandins, and thromboxanes are derived from PGH2, which again is a cyclic endoperoxide. Now all of these products, the things shown in brown, purple, blue, green, and orange, have different functions. And on your exam, you might need to know what those functions are because different substances are inhibited by different drugs. So you need to know, one, the physiological function of these bioactive products, and then two, what medications can inhibit them. So let's look at this chart. On the left-hand side, we have all of our different bioactive products of the arachidonic acid pathway. Leukotriene B4, leukotriene C4, leukotriene D4, and leukotriene E4. Then we have our PGI2, which is a prostacyclin. We've got our three prostaglandins, PGE1, PGE2, and PGF2. And then we have our thromboxane, thromboxane A2, or TXA2. Now, I've listed out the functions for you. The most important thing on this slide is to know that leukotriene B4, its function is neutrophil chemotaxis. So it is responsible for essentially ushering the neutrophils to the proper site of inflammation. My mnemonic here is that LTB, B for buses. It buses neutrophils to where they need to go. That's really important because a lot of times on exams, they're going to test if you know which leukotriene is involved in neutrophil chemotaxis. So in your head, all you need to remember is my mnemonic and say, oh, the neutrophil bus, B for bus, leukotriene B4. It buses the neutrophils. All of the other leukotrienes, which is C4, D4, and E4, they are involved in increasing bronchial tone. So it may not surprise you to hear that in the treatment of respiratory illness, in particular asthma, you can give medications that inhibit these leukotrienes because you want to decrease the bronchial tone. And my mnemonic for memorizing this is CDE bronchial tone, CDE bronchial tone, which helps me remember that CDE increases bronchial tone. And that's how it's always stuck in my brain. PGI2 decreases platelet aggregation and causes vasodilation. So PGI for platelet gathering inhibitor, it decreases platelet aggregation. PGE1 is a vasodilator and both PGE2 and PGF2 increase uterine tone. And so just like I had that kind of rhyming mnemonic above for the leukotrienes, for PGE2 and PGF2, what I say is EF2, uterine tone 2. EF2, uterine tone 2. So E and F, and of course it's E2 and F2, uterine tone 2. It increases uterine tone. And then lastly, TXA2, thromboxane A2. This increases platelet aggregation and is a vasoconstrictor. And you want to know that it increases platelet aggregation. So TXA for thrombocytosis extra activator, which is a ridiculous way of remembering that it causes thrombocytosis, which means lots of platelets. And then in my head, I see these platelets aggregating together. So these are the functions of your various products of the arachidonic acid pathway. If you're watching this video and you're like, dude, I'm not gonna memorize this, your mnemonics suck, then what you probably wanna take from this, if you're gonna pull just one thing out of here, is that 
leukotriene, B for buses, your neutrophils. B for buses, it's involved in neutrophil chemotaxis. That's probably the best return on investment on this slide. So here we are in our pathway. The last thing that you need to know for USMLE and Comlex is that in the arachidonic acid pathway, various different medications essentially serve as anti-inflammatories, which is to say that different medications can help with various states of inflammation or various path pathological states because they inhibit different parts of this pathway and have differing effects on inflammation. So I've color-coded everything, but just to draw your attention to what's on the slide, glucocorticoids, which are shown in green, inhibit phospholipase A2. So they, they sort of act on the most upstream part of this pathway, which is why uh, glucocorticoids tend to be really fantastic anti-inflammatory agents, not just because of this mechanism, but certainly because of this mechanism. They inhibit phospholipase A2. Shown in red, we can see that NSAIDs will inhibit COX-1, but interestingly, celecoxib will selectively inhibit COX-2, which is important because NSAIDs have pretty nasty gastrointestinal side effects, and by targeting specifically COX-2, celecoxib can spare an individual taking an NSAID or taking the celecoxib from some of those GI side effects. Shown in blue, we see that epoprostenol inhibits PGI-2, carboprost inhibits PGF-2, dinoprostone inhibits PGE-2, and alprostadil inhibits PGE-1. What you'll notice is in all of these medication names, you see PROST, P-R-O-S-T. So if you're taking your exam and you have to take a guess as to what these things inhibit, it's either going to be a prostaglandin or a prostacyclin because they all have PROST in the name. Probably not worth memorizing. It's really not a super high yield concept, but I'll just leave it as if you see a medication with PROST, it's inhibiting either a prostaglandin or a prostacyclin. Shown in that gold color on the bottom left-hand part of the slide, Montelukast and Zafirlukast are going to inhibit your leukotrienes. And just like we saw with the PROST agents, these have LUC in the name. So they're going to inhibit leukotrienes. Specifically, they're going to inhibit the leukotrienes that increase bronchial tone because in your various respiratory pathologies, you want to decrease respiratory tone. So you're going to inhibit the LUCs that increase bronchial tone. And then lastly, shown in orange, xyluton is going to inhibit 5-lipoxygenase. And again, we have LU in the name. So it's inhibiting an enzyme that's responsible for the creation of LU-cotriene A4. The way that you can memorize this is that the one that begins with Z, you're gonna inhibit the LU that begins with A. So I always thought A to Z. Leukotriene A4, to Z for xyluton, A to Z. A4 is inhibited by xyluton. And specifically, it's inhibiting the enzyme that produces leukotriene A4. So there's a lot of information in this video. You need to know your pathway. You need to know the physiological function of your leukotrienes, prostacyclins, prostaglandins, and thromboxanes. You need to know the medications and their mechanisms that you see on this slide. And remember, if you're like, nope, not going to do it, I'm just not going to do it. Just remember, leukotriene B4 is involved in neutrophil chemotaxis. Good luck.